Hey guys and gals, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to continue on our quest to examine and how to translate animals from semi-realistic, because um, I'm not going to go in and really render these, um, to uh, a cartoony uh, looking uh, or caricatured type of animal. Today we're going to be working on grizzly bears, so enjoy. Okay, so, grizzly bears. If any of you guys have followed my channel, you know that I have a, I don't want to call it a unhealthy, <laughs> maybe it is, an unhealthy um, obsession with uh, bears and, and grizzly bears in general, mainly because uh, one of the uh, one of the characters that I am actually working on for my book that uh, my wife and I are developing. I'm doing the illustrations and, and, and story development and she is actually writing it. Um, one of the characters is a grizzly bear. So that kind of works out, right? So this morning, I'm just gonna do a really quick um, study of a grizzly bear. I used to, uh, whenever I was in the apparel uh, industry for years, gosh, I was in the apparel industry for, whew, man, long time, almost, almost 20 years. And you could safely say that I kind of still am in the apparel industry because, you know, if somebody wants to hire me to do some type of apparel or shirts or whatever, then, you know, of course I'll take the job. But one of the things that I did was I did illustration work for the national parks. Yeah, so I worked for a company by the name of uh, Delaware North Corporation. Not for them. Um, I worked for a company, uh, a sourcing company that sourced uh, apparel and um, manufactured apparel. <clears throat> and that company uh, did have relationships with Delaware North. And of course, if anybody knows who Delaware North is, they have the contracts for the National Park Service for their um, like their souvenirs and and stuff like that. So, I had the great opportunity to work on stuff from the national parks, which is awesome. I used to love doing stuff for national parks. We're talking Yosemite, Yellowstone. Um, Grand Canyon, Tetons, you know, we also did stuff for um, the uh, Kennedy Space Center, which was really cool because I got to, you wouldn't think that's a national park, but you know, Delaware North, they did service them. <clears throat> and, you know, for years we would do illustration work and I got to do animals and I was kind of the the primary animal guy, because the other person who was on staff um, was a, a girl. She was more or less a graphic designer, so she would assemble stuff, so she didn't really draw a lot. She had the capability to draw, but she didn't do it a lot, I guess, because it, it just wasn't in her wheelhouse, which is fine. Not everybody has that capability um, readily available and enjoys it as much as I do, but um, so that's what I did. I'll give you guys a little insight on my previous life and I got to draw bears I got to draw waterfalls I got to draw icon thing you know iconish things that were in the parks um, you know old faithful and half dome and if any of you guys have ever been to the national parks you know how incredible they are um, I always wanted to and, th and this will probably still happen uh, later on in my life. Take a uh, take a trip, take a trip, and and just spend an entire summer and go and do the uh, the national parks. That's kind of one of my big bucket list items. So grizzly bears. <clears throat> I was told recently 
uh, by one of the artists that I really respect. Um, he does a lot of animal stuff and grizzly bears. He's got an entire course on bears that, uh, you know, I took <laughs> because at, at the end of the day, you know, even if you've been doing animals like this for a long time, it's always good to get another artist's interpretation, get another artist's, um, you know, viewpoint. And he said the reason why, you know, they call them grizzlies because there's a, there's a, a patch of hair on the back of their neck and it's like a tough, uh, it's very grizzly and, and rough looking. And, and, and I totally get that. I've always had, I don't, it's not a love hate because I don't, I don't hate bears because they're my favorite animal, obviously. But there's a, a high degree of fear going on there, you know? Whenever I used to do research, because I had to pull research from, um, you know, from books and the internet and whatnot for, you know, stuff that I did for the national parks. And I, I would pull up grizzly bears. And, of course, whenever you pull up grizzly bears, you have a myriad of different images but also stories of attacks, you know, and then they had pictures of attacks. And I was always just, oh gosh. And then, you know, whenever I used to go and, and do um, little trips and go and see taxidermied uh, grizzly bears and go take photos of them or else, or, you know, I'd go and, and go to a zoo and I would see a grizzly bear. The immense size <laughs> of these creatures is just it is absolutely amazing the the size and the and the intenseness of these creatures and in one facet you look at them and you say oh how beautiful but i would always look at them and say holy crap how freaking huge is that i remember going in bass pro shops with my children and they had a full size i think it was like a 12, 15 feet size grizzly bear standing and it was taxidermied and it was just absolutely huge and I was in awe of it. I just looked at it and I was in awe. Um, you know, of course, everybody's like, come on, daddy, let's go. But, you know, I wanted to sit there for a good 10 minutes and just really take that creature in and, 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 and just absorb <laughs> the in intenseness and immenseness of it. So this, what I'm gonna do to save time because the last videos, the last couple of videos have been really long. What I'm doing is just basically translating from my photo and changing a few things and you're really getting a feel of what this creature is and what he's about or she. I can't determine, I don't know enough about the creatures to determine if this is a he or a she based upon a photograph. So what I'm doing right now is I'm getting a feel for what the creature is. The size, the, um, you know, the gesture, the, the proportions, all of those things that I'm taking into account when I'm doing this creature that will translate over here in about five minutes whenever I switch over to doing a cartoon uh, type creature. So this is basically, I mean, I didn't take too long on it today. What, I don't know how long I've been doing this video for the last what, seven, six minutes. <clears throat> And there's nuances about bears, like, you know, the, the all the tuft that's right here that's really rough. It's got like a beard. And there's different types of furs. And I, and I learned this whenever I did, um, whenever I did the, <laughs> little class on bears. Um, there's different types of fur on the bear.
and you know they've got beards they've got this this really rough fur back here um, and I'm sure they've got you know different winter coats and summer coats and stuff like that <clears throat> so I would probably use this one as a study on a larger illustration if I was going to do a larger illustration so he's just he's kind of leaning on a log do the shadowing here generally speaking um, you know grizzly bears are dangerous <laughs> um, any wild animal is going to be dangerous. Recently, I read in the news that a woman that was uh, out in the wild studying grizzly bears was actually attacked by a grizzly bear. Um, she lived. She walked, uh, I think, two and a half, three miles with a cracked skull. So the immense jaw pressure that these animals possess, you have this, this mouth that has a capability to open really wide. But if you look, if you ever see a, a bear skeleton that has the musculature, that muscle right here that splits, it's got a, a line down the center, that muscle is literally this size right here. It is absolutely massive. I don't know how many pounds of pressure that these animals have the capability to produce whenever they're biting, but it is pretty intense. So we're not gonna go into the science or anything about the bears today. I just wanted to get this really rough in before we go to the, uh, to the cartoon. Some brand, or some stuff to back here to kind of break up that negative space. We're gonna darken in this eye a little bit, give him a little bit of character. There we go. He's kind of looking out. He's like, "What's up? What's up over there? What is that? Huh? What's going on right there?" So anyway, this is kind of a, a realistic interpretation semi <laughs> of a grizzly bear really quick really fun really just you know getting the job done getting it done quickly now i feel what the bear is now i understand the proportions so we're going to go to the cartoony bear okay so i've cleared the other drawing away didn't get rid of it just cleared it so now we're gonna work on a sort of a cartoon interpretation of a bear. One of the <clears throat> things I had the opportunity to work on when I was um, working over doing stuff at Disney was the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the uh, Country Bear Jamboree, uh, stuff for the Country Bear Jamboree. I really, I love those bears. I remember growing up as a kid, I always was fascinated with the country bears, um, you know, and their story and, and just their design uh, in general. But I never had the opportunity to go and see them, and I don't know why. Isn't that weird? I was always fascinated with, you know, I see their signs, and I love the posters that Disney has whenever you first get into the park. But... I just, I never had the opportunity. I don't know if it was my family or my parents, whatever. It's probably what it was. I just didn't want to wait in line. So, whenever you do stuff like this, and I've, you know, I explained this before, the bears, uh, especially at Disney and, and some of the other properties out there, they have their roots, you know, the designs have their roots in, um, in reality so just like because this is going to be a grizzly bear so just like the grizzly bear that i just did the there's going to be you know some rough tuft in the back he's going to have um i'm going to put pants on him overalls actually um <clears throat> go do this gonna have a big booty because <laughs> if you ever look 
bears, like grizzly bears especially, they got big butts. You know, and, and frankly, I don't think they can lie. You know, they got big butts and they cannot lie. So, anyway, that's a little jab. But what I'm saying is, they the characters themselves have roots uh, in reality. So, even though it's going to be you know caricatured and, and I'm going to have certain areas that are you know really pushed, there it's still going to be a grizzly bear. So anyway, I remember, especially the country bears. There's just a a degree of I don't know. If it's insulting, it probably is. They're just, they're kind of goofy. Like, do, 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 you know, that, that kind of a feeling. So, it, it's not really lowbrow, but it's, it's definitely got that, you know, we're gonna, Disney's gonna caricature a, a bear and, and have it represent, you know, Southern, like a Southern culture that laid back Southern culture. <clears throat> I don't want to call, you know, I don't want to say that they're making fun of Southerners, but they kind of, eh, they kind of were, you know? But it's all tongue in cheek, I guess, right? So, do this, we'll give him, he's got his ears, the ears are lower. Comes down. He's got his neck because it's kind of he's kind of stuck out, you know. Get that other ear in there, but I don't think I can because this he's got his tuft comes around like this. And he's kind of, he's got, you know, he's put on a couple pounds. He's got his arm. <clears throat> you know, it comes up. Maybe his hand's in his pocket. a little bit too big. So we're going to shrink the mouth just a little bit. There we go. I'm just going to have these folds that come around. Yeah. I'm probably going to put a hat on him too. And anyway, like I was saying, I really had a, a good time um, working at Disney and doing stuff for Disney. There, you can't really put a price tag on that type of experience whenever you're around like-minded individuals that love what they do. And, you know, they're, Disney has a really great habit of hiring extremely talented individuals um, for, you know, all the different departments. They're just really creative. They love what they do, you know. There we go. Yeah, his arm comes around like that. There we go. Let's get that long. Got that big old booty. Claws that come out here. And, you know, I'm remembering when I was working on the other drawing, <clears throat> the, uh, 
the, you know, the, the under part of the arm that has, you know, the fur that is exposed, you know, Got this. Tie. <laughs> I don't understood that. Why do bears wear ties? I just don't get it. And then I got that other part that comes down here. You know, you know. afraid a few times. This is the hat, by the way. If you didn't understand what I was doing, I'm pretty sure you did. I'm going to have it like this and color that in. Color that in. And it comes here. Maybe he's got a Okay, I'm going to do a little shadowing here and there. Alright. Got some overalls on. Just a little bit. Do the same thing here. Color this in. Make this a little bit more prevalent. He's got some patches. He's got his fur that comes out here. Maybe there's a... He's got his... Bucket of cider. <laughs> yes, cider. <laughs> out around got the shadow that comes on the bottom and what I'm doing now basically is I am just doing little details to help support like his lower half is really pushing down because the gravity is pulling it and grass here and there walking through the forest get some maybe he's got a pocket here with a handkerchief see it's always handy boom 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 didn't have to stop at all didn't have to sharpen a pencil with that horribly degrading sound. It sounds like chickens being murdered. I'm talking about the pencil sharpener, of course. 
you know. So anyway, this is kind of what I was talking about. Just going in, exploring, having fun, feeling out the character, not really, you know, stressing about anything. Just, you know, I got up this morning with a horrible headache. I don't know if anybody else has done that. I'm sh pretty sure it was the weather. Weather changes and the barometric pressure changes and then it, it does weird things with my sinuses and I wake up with a nasty, massive headache. And I'm like, oh, sweet Lord, help me. Anyway, so I woke up this morning. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do a bear. And I just decided to feel it out and do a bear. Now, of course, this would be the first swing. <laughs> if any of you guys are, who are artists know, you know, your first swing sometimes could be your best. Could be. It could be. You never know. But I would probably do about four more of these different positions if I was doing a character design or if I was doing something for my, um, for my book, depending on uh, what the, let me go ahead and do this. You know what the storyboard um, was. He's got the finger that comes around here, and he's got the finger that comes down here. Yeah, he's gonna be drinking some apple cider today. Wink, wink. Anyway, so that's pretty much it. That's Cartoon Bear. Principles and anatomy and um, reference to the other bear that I did that can translate over and easily readable. You know, you got the, the fur, you got the, the way the, uh, the muzzle is designed. You've got the uh, thickness of the neck, the tufted uh, fur on the back. You've got, um, you know, the wideness. I didn't show the body, obviously, but the body. Uh, you know, has a, a large thickness to it. And of course, you know, the, this is a caricatured. Everything's exaggerated, you know. And of course, you know, real bears don't wear pants. You know, I still don't think they do. Do they? You guys know I'm just kidding, right? So that's it. That's this morning. Um... Didn't spend too much time on this. Uh, tomorrow I might be doing something digitally, so stay tuned. Um, I'm gonna try, like I said, to be doing videos uh, a little bit more regularly, if not every day, but every other day, so I can get the channel viewership built up and, and possibly start um, you know, building the channel up. That's what I really wanna do, is, is build this channel up to where I don't have to, uh, you know, I don't have to um, kill myself working all the time. You know, I can do a video here and there for you guys, and, and you guys can really enjoy it and uh, get something from it. So please click that like button, share button, if you like what you see. I'm always uh, looking to better myself and do things a little bit better, do things a little bit different, you know. I do traditional drawing, I do digital drawing, I do uh, digital sculpting, I do watercolor painting, I do acrylic painting. You name it, airbrush work. I've done pretty much <laughs> the majority of stuff out there pertains to artwork, and I'm, I'm ready and willing to show you guys how to do stuff. So, um, you know, of course I could do, you know, popular stuff like your Marvel characters and, and stuff like that, but at the end of the day, there's so many other artists doing that, and, and even though it's fun to watch and you, you, you like it, you're not gonna really, I'm not gonna say you're gonna, not gonna learn something from it, but I'm here to really push that envelope and, and, and have you guys level up and step up and, and be better artists overall. Um, those of you who are interested, um, I'm gonna post um, in the uh, description below, somebody commented, you know, how do I find Ronnie Williford? Uh, you can look up and uh, search Ronnie, uh, on YouTube, it's R O N N I E W I L L I F O R D, and he's one of the artists that I found that I really enjoy, and I highly recommend him. He's a traditional painter and, and I believe ex Disney animator, um, and he's just a, an all around great, uh, great guy. Um, I believe he's got a little bit of edge to him, which I like. <laughs> so, you know, 
tongue in cheek sometimes, but just go and support the guy. He's trying to build his channel up, and I think he's uh, he's you know kind of in the same court as I am, just trying to help. So, thank you guys, and we'll definitely see you next time. Bye.